This camera, part of a flying laboratory, is recovered by Clyde Holliday of Johns Hopkins, who prepared it for its trip to the upper stratosphere. Rivaling the fantastic imagination of Jules Verne, the camera brought back a record of a flight into the heavens of a captured German B-2 rocket. At White Sands, New Mexico, the huge missile takes off. Air Force pictures show the rocket in flight, and the flying camera automatically takes over. A huge projectile drops the Earth behind at the tremendous speed of 4,000 feet per second. The rotation of the rocket causes the planet to spin before the lens, and the camera photographs the Earth 65 miles straight down. The horizon, 720 miles away, and the curvature of the Earth are astonishingly apparent in this still picture from the film. An observer in the rocket could have seen San Diego, Salt Lake City, Kansas City, and San Antonio. Approximately 1,600,000 square miles of the Earth's surface was revealed. The rocket reached the 65-mile height in three minutes. This giant engine of destruction, designed by Hitler to annihilate Allied nations, now serves the worthy cause of peacetime research. Okay, so just watching that short clip, a um, couple of facts and a couple of numbers we'll go through real quick, and I'll touch back on them later. But uh, in order, according to NASA, in order to enter orbit, you must go 4.9 miles per second. 4.9 miles times 5280 feet in a mile is 25,872 feet per second to, to reach, quote, escape velocity. Um, according to the old propaganda piece that we just watched, the rocket is going only 4,000 feet per second, or 0 0.75757575 to infinity miles per second. 4,000 feet every second times 60 seconds is 240,000 feet in a minute. 240,000 feet in a minute divided by 5280 feet in a mile, it's uh, actually 45.45454545455 into infinity miles per minute times 60 minutes equals 2727.27272727272 miles per hour. So the total time from launch to the point when he states that they are 65 miles in the air is actually 30 seconds in the video, where they're 65 miles straight up. But the rocket had been launched, it was really less than or even exactly at 30 seconds into that film. I put a counter in there, so just to be sure. So if it was indeed traveling at 4,000 feet per second, even for the entire duration, which is impossible as it would have first needed to accelerate from zero and eventually reach 4,000 feet per second, this proves that the video that was released is at least misguided in their documentation of the speed of the rocket and the distance to the ground at the, uh, at the zenith, but uh, this is at worst a total fabrication. Uh, a lie that is apparent to anyone who does the math here and scrutinizes the video and narration. If the rocket was indeed going 4,000 feet per second, or 240,000 feet per minute, or 45.454545 miles per minute, or 2727.2727272 miles per hour, uh, it would still take 1.4301, 4301, 4301, 4301 minutes, or a little bit less than a minute and a half, to get to the 65 miles above the Earth going 4,000 feet per second. So this video is obviously a hoax, since the rocket going 4,000 feet per second reaches the 65 mile mark in under 30 seconds, according to the movie, this is a total lie. I found it extremely odd that all of the math around the numbers given by the narrator seem to encode uh, multiple imperfect numbers or decimal points that introduce a never-ending repetition of the same pattern of numbers until infinity. In almost every case of these mathematics, this has occurred, and if you understand the secretive, esoteric, occult societies, they use numbers as a secondary language that will only make sense to the people who take the time to do the calculations and have the ability to interpret the numbers into meaningful message. And um, we can tell just by some very basic cursory calculations based on what that uh, narrator was saying, there certainly is no validity to the numbers he's saying at their face value. So I think maybe, you know, if we dug a little bit deeper into the numbers, now I will tell you that I, I, I'm not into numerology. Um, I will take a look at that in this case. Um, uh, however, they are, and they encode things things or encode messages within numbers for those with the you know initiation or with the eyes to see and the ears to hear to decipher and anytime you find such repeating or imperfect numbers in a propaganda piece um, upon actually you know sort of scrutinizing the numbers they're giving you it's worth at least looking into them from uh, an esoteric numerological standpoint for further scrutiny now, before we do that, pay attention to the videos, which I've uh, added some brightness to allow for better visual representation of what's supposedly filmed from the backside of a rocket. And um, I'll, I'll do a couple of different 
takes on this as well as uh, try to track certain objects by you know rotating the camera instead of seeing the rocket rotate so a couple different things I've done there just to try to depict some points um, or you know or at least for your visual uh, interpretation because to me it, it sort of looks like a model um, one thing that's clear from the get-go in this little video is the fact that the first few seconds of the launch are shot from you know they're shot of some rocket from an observer standing on the ground watching the rocket take off and then the camera attached to the rocket automatically takes over after the Air Force pictures show them show the rocket in flight. So now we really need to stop and think about this a minute. Why wouldn't the camera have simply continuously shot the launch of the rocket from the ground up? Why did they need to film the takeoff from the ground and then cut to another camera from the point of view of the quote rocket, which automatically picks up right where the Air Force camera left off uh, on the ground? So to anyone who's edited video before, you'll see that this is an obvious cut of two completely different things. The first uh, series of images is of the rocket launch as viewed from the ground, then cut to the rocket supposedly flying in space. Uh, to people in the 1940s, I can assure you this was a very realistic video. Um, but the very first few frames on the automatic camera show it's really just sort of a distorted mess of light and steam and maybe look, looks like some trickery to me, and certainly do not appear to be genuine. The entire plane and the baseball field, or whatever that is there, appear to be a model, along with all the trees, akin to those uh, found on a toy train set. Um, there are several other instances of such apparent trick photography, which involves cutting one segment of video into a completely different segment of video instantly with you know, either a lens flare or distortion or rotation to trick the eye into believing that it's one continuous shot. If you're not familiar with change blindness, it's a way to trick the human eye. Uh, just a quick example, if you look at an image with, say, 10 lions sitting in a jungle scene, um, and then you watch the image closely, you study it, and then if you're watching it and an 11th lion steps into the picture, then you're certainly going to notice that 11th lion very easily because you watched him enter the picture. But if you were to be distracted from looking at the 10 lions while the 11th lion entered and sat down, then odds are you wouldn't really notice the 11th lion unless you had, you know, you were expecting to see it and you had studied the before and after pictures for a while and then finally you might figure out eventually that there was another lion, an extra lion in the before and after picture. But that's sort of how change blindness works in terms of human perception of images. Um, if you inspect this footage, you'll see they've spent a lot of time splicing at least three or four or possibly even more segments of videos together using sloppy editing practices, which are necessary process prior to CGI or modern advances in video editing. Um, and what I'll try to do is sort of play the uh, questionable areas in forward and reverse, forward and reverse a couple of times until you can kind of see where it's almost, it's rather obvious that they're splicing um, different segments of videos together. Now, I must say that they certainly did do an excellent job for their time. Um, this was in the 1940s. However, now that we have the tools to scrutinize videos frame by frame and in you know different uh, levels of light and uh, gamma and uh, you know negative scales, uh, it's it's obvious that the entire rocket launch that we're looking at here was a complete hoax, and that it probably contains about five percent true video of a rocket launch, and 95 percent looks like scale models, trick photography, and clever manual editing, which literally involves cutting strips of film with scissors and splicing them back together with other strips of film with tape. No kidding. I mean, it, uh, to me, it seems like models mixed in with some real footage from, you know, either airplanes or ultimately plain old trick photography and clever editing. I've already proven that there's no possible way a rocket of its given velocity by the narrator, or 4,000 feet per second, could reach anywhere near 65 miles into the air in the given amount of time, given the fact that the video from the time of launch is less than 30 seconds, when it should take almost a minute and a half to reach that altitude traveling 4,000 feet per second. Now, really closer to two minutes, if you factor in the amount of time it takes for the rocket to reach its max velocity upwards. It doesn't start off doing 4,000 feet per second. Now, couple that with the fact that they use several clips spliced into a single, quote, continuous animation of sorts, as well as the lack of footage from the ground up. And it's obvious this becomes a total fallacy designed to drum up early support for a rocket program and to drum up support for a ball Earth as well. If you noticed, uh, one of the things they mentioned was... You and the curvature of the Earth are astonishingly apparent. It wasn't a curve at all. It was either the horizon or just a 
fake altogether. But um, I think another fact to take into account on this video is the fact that once the rocket reaches a certain altitude, it begins to spin wildly out of control end over end, which is something that uh, also occurs when weather balloons go up beyond a specific level of altitude into the uh, sky. So there may have been some, you know, actual images from a rocket ship in that particular video, but not the full thing we saw in its entirety. There was definitely some trick photography going there. Um, there appears to be a point when the atmosphere becomes so very thin and scarce, objects with mass rendered with weight on the Earth due to barometric pressure, according to the laws of density, simply do not behave in a way consistent with that of objects firmly held together by the pressure, which we all take for granted here on the ground, since it's been in our lives forever. Put it this way, uh, rockets rely on the laws of aerodynamics to function. So a rocket or an arrow is shaped in such a way that it creates the least amount of drag towards the front by having a tapered point towards the front, and extrusions or wings or guiding planes to create the necessary drag and guidance towards the rear of the projectile. You realize this is to keep it stable, and it is totally relying on the pressure of the air around it to keep it stable. So when the rocket is traveling through the air, the thrust from the rear causes the rocket to begin its travel forward. As it accelerates, a non-aerodynamic object would want to lean away from the wind resistance directly at the front, in any direction away from the resistance. However, the rocket's aerodynamics take advantage of this resistance by having the nose come to a tapered point, and the rudders or wings towards the rear create the necessary drag and guidance towards the rear to keep the rocket traveling in a straight line. <clears throat> if you remove the atmospheric pressure from the equation of aerodynamics, you no longer have a viable medium to control a rocket in. If this doesn't make sense, let me give you an example. Uh, airplanes uh, need air to have some degree of density in order to fly through the air. The curve and angle of the wing creates a high pressure below the wing and a low pressure above the wing. So it's this differential in pressure that causes airplanes to fly. Airplanes have an altitude cap based on this principle of barometric pressure providing lift. If a plane goes too high, it simply cannot fly because constant pressure necessary to make it fly will not exist. The same thing applies to the rockets in a way, slightly different way, but once they reach the altitude uh, so far above the earth or so far above the atmosphere that the, the air is so thin that it does not have the pressure needed to allow the rudders or the guidance planes a chance to function, and so the rocket would simply begin to spin wildly out of control until it would probably just burst into pieces under the extremely high forces created by high velocity spinning without any atmospheric resistance to balance out the immense thrust. So anyway, the numerology in here is sort of odd. Again, I don't subscribe to numerology, but I know that uh, a lot of the people behind this sort of thing do. So if you take the narrator's original assertion that it's traveling at a tremendous speed of 4,000 feet per second, I've already demonstrated that this is totally wrong, or the fact that the rocket reached 65 miles in less than 30 seconds at the max speed is wrong. Either way, this documentary is wrong, and I believe it was counting on people not doing the math involved, and those who did take the time to do the math would find the repeating or imperfect number sequences. Now, later on in the video, for some reason, he said that it the rocket reached the 65 mile height in three minutes, which was kind of weird because I did time the the entire video starting from the time it took off the ground until the time that it reached the point where he said it was 65 miles up. A 30 second time span. So, in order for it to go 65 miles in three minutes, which still doesn't add up to either of the previous calculations, in order for his statement to be true, the rocket would need to go 21.6666666 to infinity miles per minute, 1906.6666666 to infinity feet per second, half the speed the narrator said the rocket was going in the beginning. So <laughs> even if, I guess what I'm saying here is even if it did take three minutes instead of 30 seconds, which it actually did, then if the thing was going 4,000 feet per second, it was going twice as fast as it should have to reach that distance in three minutes. Again, 65 miles in three minutes. Should have been 1,906 feet per second, not 4,000 feet per second. But uh, so, you know, when we scrutinize what this official government account in 1943 was exactly a propaganda piece that makes absolutely not one iota of sense. If you scrutinize it, it also contains a bunch of built-in repeating decimals, which are sort of encoded into the numbers given by the narrator, which can indicate an occult significance. Now, I've seen such a wide range of numerological definitions for the different numbers, I don't want to subscribe to any of it, of course, but I do realize that the occult groups indeed do hold some type of code in numerology. So to someone initiated, these coded numbers 
<clears throat> hidden into the nonsensical distances and velocities may very well be a coded message of sorts. Who knows? But it sure wasn't the truth, and it sure wasn't anywhere near accurate in terms of the uh, numbers the narrator was describing. If uh, any numerologists out there care to take a crack at it, there you go.